Welcome back to financemanagertraining.com. My name is Ryan, I'm one of the FNI trainers here. And this video is for one of our FNI students who had a few specific questions that he wanted us to go over in videos. And that is one advantage of being an FNI student with Finance Manager Training is that if you have any questions, you can book a live chat with us where we'll directly talk to you and role play with you and help you learn one-on-one. Uh, -on -one or you can also ask for custom videos to be made just for you. So Keith, this one's for you. You asked about the F&I menu presentation and how it's done when someone objects and you are using a digital menu. I think you mentioned that your dealership has a DocuPad, but dealerships around the nation are switching to various things. Some still a paper, some do it by memory, <laughs> no paper at all. Uh, some are on tablets, some are on DocuPads. It all kind of depends on what your dealership has and the situation you have going on. So how do you go through your process? Meaning um, how do you use your buffer documents and how do you, uh, you know, kind of sort through paperwork while they're thinking and that sort of thing that you learned in the F and I menu presentation course, when you use a digital method that doesn't allow you to do that. Well, the number one thing I want to mention is you got to follow the framework, right? So we have a framework with everything we do here. And yes, you want to follow this to the T, but there are going to be times when you need to take that framework and adjust it to your particular situation. What is our framework? What is our number one thing that we teach in our course over at financemanagertraining.com? What is the formula for profit in the F&I office? The formula is this. A proper explanation of benefits plus unbiased information, meaning you're not being salesy, plus a professional environment, meaning an office that doesn't have you know, rims in the corner that are dinged up and you're pointing to them and engine control modules on your desk and et cetera. Those three things together equal profit in the finance office. That's our framework. So we want to follow that framework. Secondly, you watch the course, you learned about buffer documents, you learned about how, you know, when the customer says no, you move on and then you come back to it. How do you do that with a digital menu? Don't forget, you're in a physical office. Even though you are using a digital menu, you're still in a physical office. There are still things you can touch. There are still things you can grab. There are still things you need to move around and, and, and play with in order to draw the customer's attention away from what you are doing at the moment and what they are learning about at the moment to something else temporarily, and then you can come back to it. So let's say you had just presented the F&I menu to your customer and they're giving you objection after objection and you learned in the F&I menu presentation course to not keep hammering, 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 because again, that's not professional number one. Number two, you wouldn't want that if you were in the F&I office as a customer. And number three, that's kind of what they expect from an F&I manager. They expect to get hammered down. They expect for you to act like a bully. They expect that nonsense. You want to do something they don't expect, right? So they give you the injection. You say, no promise to customer. You do the same thing you would do in the F&I menu presentation course, which is you move on to other paperwork but you don't have other paperwork. So instead, you can turn to your computer. Just one moment, let me just load up the details of the deal. You know, you're entering, you're typing information. Oh, yeah, did you watch the ball game last night? Yeah, I saw you were in the cap. I kind of figured you did. You're, you know, you're typing things into your calculator, you're back to the computer. Remember, you're still in a physical location just because you're using a digital device. So the purpose of moving on with other paperwork is not just to get things done, it's to move past the stage in the negotiation where walls are being set. When he's giving you or she's giving you objections and you are overcoming those objections, what you guys are both doing essentially is you're building your wall brick by brick by brick. But on the other end, he or she is building their wall brick or brick by brick. And what you wanna do by moving to something else, and if you're on paper, you can do other documents, but if you're digital, you can go on the computer, type on the, type on the uh, calculator, or whatever, is you wanna tear those walls down for a minute. You don't want those walls to keep being built. And by arguing, that's what you're doing. So he, uh, he or she is arguing with you, they're giving you objections, you're overcoming them, but they're still stacking that wall up. You wanna get away from that. 
turn to the computer, no problem, Mr. Customer, let me just load up some, some of the details of your deal so I can get them transferred over to the tablet, transferred over the DocuPad, transferred over whatever. You know, you're doing stuff, you're talking about random things. Oh, did you see this? Oh, did you see that? Did you have a good experience? Oh, I, I love the color of the car you picked out. Stuff like that. Then after a few minutes, you come back to it and you follow the rest of the F and I menu presentation course, which is, you, you know, Mr. Customer, I can't get this off my mind. You mentioned, or, you know, I was just thinking about, or just last night I was reading about this, or, you know, I saw the fine print on this product and I think you might be interested. Or, you know, Mr. Customer, something you may not have noticed, or Mr. Customer, something I may not have explained well enough, that's putting the onus on you instead of them, which puts them, you know, away from the defensive. So just because you have a digital product, you're using a DocuPad or an iPad or et cetera, does not mean that you have to delve your entire F9 menu presentation into that digital product. You're still in a physical office. Use your computer, use your calculator, move things around, grab papers, grab binders, touch pamphlets, whatever you gotta do to move away from the area where you are just stacking bricks and he's stacking bricks and you're both building walls against each other. Okay, moving on to the second question our student had, and that was about selling F&I product to cash customers. Now, there are two different questions going on here, so I'm not 100% sure which one they mean, but let's go over both for a minute. So there is the true cash conversion. The true cash conversion is when you are speaking to a customer who came in with $50,000 in their pocket, just wads of cash that they wanna slap on your desk and say, I'm paying cash for this vehicle. That is the true cash customer. And that customer, the chances of them switching from that cash they have in their hand to a finance product is, I mean, you're talking 5% chance, maybe. Some people say they have 10%, but in the dealerships I've been in across the country, I have not seen many people go above 5% converting someone from true cash to finance. Now, some people, they'll go down a very dangerous road and the road is this. They start talking about the percentage that they can get back from their investments and how by financing at 0.9% or 1.9%, it's a much better financial uh, choice than it would be to take their money out of the stock market or take their money out of a mutual fund or whatever it may be. This is a very dangerous area. You do not want to get into a fight with the SEC. You do want, not want to get into an investigation with your dealership and the government. Don't go down this path. It's not worth that five to 10% chance of converting that cash customer to the finance customer. If you want to try anything, if you want to take the 10 or 15 minutes of your time to see if you can do it, go with the gap route. The gap conversion goes a little like this. Mr. Customer, I completely understand that you want to pay cash for your vehicle today. That's extremely impressive. The majority of customers don't do that. You obviously worked hard, you saved your money, and now you're able to pay this vehicle without paying a dime in interest. That's awesome. One thing I do want to mention, Mr. Customer, is that when you pay cash, you're also risking your cash. And they're gonna be, what do you mean? Well, Mr. Customer, in the event of a total loss, you're gonna get for your vehicle whatever the insurance company deems the market value is, okay? You may not get the exact amount of cash that you pay today for your vehicle. But the alternative is, if you did want to finance, and finance rates are very low nowadays, uh, you can include gap insurance on that plan, and gap insurance takes the risk of any additional payment that may be needed. So you're not risking that money that you worked so hard to save. If you want to go that route, go that route. To me, as a finance manager, the five to 10% chance of switching that customer to finance is not worth the flat that I would get from that finance contract. Because let's be honest, the person you're switching from cash to finance, you're not gonna mark them up any points. You're not making one or two points on them. You're gonna sell them at buy, and you're gonna get the flat for that. Is that worth the time that you could have spent with another customer? I don't think so. But how about the other option? The other option is just selling F&I products to cash customers, meaning, You've already come to the realization that they are gonna say cash. You're not gonna bother taking that 5% chance of selling them uh, on converting to finance. So what can you do to sell F&I products to them? Okay, there's two ways. 
Number one, and this is extremely important, you want to make sure that they are an actual cash customer, okay? All too often, a salesperson will come to your office and they'll say, I have a cash customer for you. And what actually that means is the customer is going to another lender, another bank, another credit union, and they are getting a loan. That is not a cash customer. A cash customer has cash. I know it's pretty simple, okay? But a cash customer is not loaning money from another institution. They are financing their vehicle, they're just not financing it with you, okay? So they're gonna go to another lender, they're gonna get all their paperwork filled out, they're gonna get that check and they're gonna bring it back to you. And the dealership eyes, yes, I get that, it's cash in the bank, but it's not the customer's cash, it's bank A's cash or bank B's cash. That is not a cash customer. And that's the type of customer that you can switch from going from bank A to your in-house lenders. Mr. Customer, uh, I understand that you're paying cash today. Oh no, we're actually, uh, we're actually financing with, uh, with a Credit Union B down on Main Street. Oh, that's awesome, I've worked with them before. Uh, may I ask, uh, what rate did you get with them? Oh, 3.4%. Uh, okay, that, that's great. Hey, not bad, right? Uh, just so you know, typically someone in your situation is getting around 1.9% right now. Would you, like, would you be interested in doing that? So Mr. Customer, um, I, I understand you're paying cash today, right? Oh, well, no, we're actually, uh, we're going down to ABC Credit Union and we're gonna get a check and bring it back to you. Okay, <laughs> that's not cash, right? They're financing and they're giving you someone else's money. That's not their cash. So that is the type of customer that you can switch from, from being a cash customer, which they're not, to, uh, to lending with you. If you're able to find out what the, what the APR they're getting with you know, Credit Union C, and let's say it's 4%, and you can get them down to 2%, or you think that you can get them down to 2%, well, then you have an avenue. That, that, then, you have a, then you have a way to go. Some people will still stay with their credit union, and they'll pay more for their credit union, but at least you have a way to go. But what about actual cash buyers, the ones that come in with the cash in their pocket, or they have the check from their personal checking account, the real cash buyers? How do you sell F&I products to them? Well, in a previous lesson, we talked about buyer personality types, their, how they interact, how they think, how, you know, how they respond to things you say and what they're thinking in their own head, right? Now, try to put yourself in the shoes of someone who's paying cash. Now, yes, it could be someone who's very wealthy and just decides to take that amount of money out of their bank account and pay off their vehicle. But a lot of times it's someone who simply had the fortitude to save up that money over a long amount of time. That's what happens a lot. So you gotta put yourself into the shoes of that person. Someone who really respects the value of every dollar. Someone who's very careful with their money. Someone who's very frugal. Someone who thinks in dollars and cents, right? How can we explain the benefits of our F&I products to someone who only thinks in dollars and cents. One of my favorite ways to do that is to switch it from dollars and cents to something else. Because if they only think in dollars and cents, they are only gonna see your product as a number in their mind. If they see your VSC as only dollars, they are not going to see the benefit of it. So how can we switch that? Here's how. You show them it as a percentage, okay? You know, Mr. Customer, I commend you for working so hard and saving that money so you can come into this dealership today and purchase this vehicle without financing a single cent, without paying any interest. You know, not many people can do that and you did it, so congratulations. You know, there's one thing I'm not sure if you thought about, and that's protecting your vehicle. You know, obviously you worked this hard to save that money. You wanna make sure it's protected for the next seven years and 100,000 miles, right? You don't wanna take your vehicle home and have to spend even more money. That'd be silly. Mr. Customer, for only 3.2%, 
I have options to protect your vehicle going forward. And then you can move into your, to your presentation. But again, we're switching from dollars to percentages. Because as a person who thinks in only dollars, if you talk to them in dollars, they are going to correlate your product to dollars. And to someone who sees dollars as maybe not a negative thing, but something to be careful about, something to be frugal about, something to hold on to and save, a correlating may not be the best way to go about it. Maybe the best way to go about it is to correlate it to a percentage. Mr. Cosme, you saved all this money, and for only 3.2% more, you can protect it for the next seven years and 100,000 miles. You are protecting the last three years of your life for the next seven years. You saved money for the last three years. You are protecting all that work you did for the last three years for the next seven years for only 3.2% of the vehicle price. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you. And um, if you have any other questions, by all means, go to the members area of financemanagertraining.com, open a new ticket, send a message to support, start a live chat, give us a call, whatever it may be, and we'll make you your own custom video lesson. Talk to you soon.